Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1185. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about First Republic in trouble. This reminds me a lot of Silicon Valley Bank, where initially, when they started to have a run on deposits, their publicly traded stock started to decline rapidly. And after the stock exchanges put stops on trading as it went lower and lower and lower, they tried to raise funds by selling more shares of stock. This is exactly what's happening to First Republic right now. They're looking for ways to raise capital by selling more stock, and they've lost over $100 million in deposits. So basically, there's a run on the bank happening, but the difference this time is the government officials are saying they're not planning to do anything about it, which is very concerning. So today, shares of First Republic were down about 20% after being down 50% yesterday. The stock has fallen more than 90% year to date. This all happened after First Republic disclosed that it had lost roughly 40% of its deposits in the first quarter. But there reportedly is a group of banks coming together, about 11 larger banks that want to infuse $30 billion of deposits into First Republic in an attempt to instill confidence and prevent bank runs from spreading. Because that's the real risk here, is that bank runs spread to other banks and the whole system starts to implode. That should be what the Federal Reserve doesn't want and they should step in to backstop it and stop the fear by saying they're not going to do anything, they're actually making the situation worse, in my opinion. Reportedly, advisors to First Republic are trying to convince at least a few of these 11 larger banks to provide further support by buying some of First Republic's assets at above market rates. The problem is those purchases would result in losses for the other banks, and no bank wants that on their balance sheet. But First Republic's advisors are trying to sell the banks on the idea that if they let First Republic fail, it would be even more expensive in the long run to bail them out. So this would be a less expensive way to do it, although they would be overpaying for assets. According to CNBC, if First Republic is successful in selling off some of its assets, it will then look to raise equity, which would dilute current shareholders. Again, they are reporting that government officials are currently unwilling to intervene in the First Republic rescue process. This is very concerning, and obviously this is the kind of thing that can spread panic and get out of control very quickly. This is not something that regulators should take lightly. The shocking thing is the bank was worth about $40 billion in November of 2021, and its market value now is less than $1 billion for the first time ever. So it's looking like this is going to be very difficult for First Republic to get out of this situation. And ultimately what happens is other banks do come in and take over the assets. Remember that happened years ago in 2008 with Washington Mutual and other banks coming in to take them over. Nonetheless, what I'm concerned about is the government officials saying they're not going to do anything. That doesn't instill confidence, and that can cause this bank-run mentality to spread to other institutions, which would not be a good thing. It's a little surprising that we're not seeing silver and gold react to this. I would think we'd see a big spike up with this loss of confidence happening, but that may still happen, just not yet. But we do see a big move up in crypto, which is the other place that money tends to run to when there's a lack of faith and confidence in the financial system. Many of our cryptos are up four, five, six percent today. 
So we'll continue to monitor this situation. I'm hoping that the regulators will come in and backstop or say something positive about this. The big question that everyone is going to be asking is how will this impact or will this impact what the Federal Reserve does with the interest rate hike that is planned for May 3rd? One of the things I said is that if we have some sort of black swan event like a bank failure, that might temper the Federal Reserve from raising rates this time because any raise in interest rates is only going to make the banking system weaker. And if we have another sign of another bank in trouble, that should be the last thing that the Federal Reserve wants to do. So we'll see if this has any impact on the increase in rates next week. It just might. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.